things in your back pocket that you could do just to buy humanity a few more decades if that's the way you want to think. So they're not a long-term solution, but they don't need to be. On its own, people will stop emitting CO2. On its own, eventually this, the cost will come down. So if the government in the year 2060 wanted to spend a trillion dollars a year, they could just suck CO2 out of the atmosphere directly if they needed to. Yeah. So I think I'm just, I would love to hear your main line. What is like, your specific issue? Like, I feel like you're proposing a lot of like, what ifs. Like, I think that in any day life, you can be like, oh, well, what if this happens? If we were all so focused on the what if, like, I don't think any of us would leave our dorms or our houses. I was like, oh, like, what if, you know, Blasty catches on fire? I probably wouldn't have come to this. But I think I realized, like, that's pretty unrealistic, you know, mm -hmm. from the newer buildings on campus. Anyways, just, like, I think that you're you're criticizing the extreme reaction to climate change, but it seems like you're taking kind of the unextreme. And, like, what is your criticism of just, like, the middle? Or what is your position? Because right. I think a lot of, like, my takeaway hasn't really been definitive. It's been a lot of, like, Oh, like I see some data, and I see what you're saying, and I think that there's an argument to either side. But I would just like to know, like, what's your position besides I don't want the government getting involved? Well, that is my position, but, <laughs> but is there like yeah. you have actually like a scientific position or just a political? Position okay, well, 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 again, so I'm an economist with a specialty in, in climate change policy issues, and so. I will say this, that yeah, the, the major proposals I have seen for what governments could do w is not going to address the problem, even on its own terms. But so, you have a solution? So that, okay, so I don't think it's actually going to be, uh, give me, that's why I brought the, the horse and buggy thing. There was a point where people were projecting, they were looking at population growth and the increase in horse traffic, and they were worried that, oh gee, cities by the year 1930 are going to be buried in manure, things like that. That obviously didn't happen because cars came along. So, I, no, I absolutely do not think in the year 2100 people are going to be looking back and saying, wow, I wish people back in the year you know, 2020 had taken steps to make the world one one hundredth of a degree cooler than it otherwise would be right now. I don't, I don't think, I think they're going to look back and think this was a lot of alarm over stuff that they weren't inventing, but that was not nearly as catastrophic as the, the way people have been led to believe. And I do think if, if there are, you know, if it does turn out, if I'm wrong, because again, yeah, it's not my area, I could be wrong, but they can do things like this that would buy humanity several decades in order for other things to, to come online. So, if, so let me, I think maybe you would say something, what's the harm in putting in place a modest carbon tax and then using the money you know, to refund payroll taxes how, how could that hurt? Is that a fair? I would, or, or at least, I'll, well, I'll respond to it, just maybe to give you an okay. idea. And the reason is because I, yeah, I don't think they're gonna, they're gonna use the, they're gonna spend that money. You know, there, there has not been a, a revenue neutral carbon tax yet. In BC, British Columbia, they had one for a while, and then now, you know, they're, they're clearly spending more of that money. So piecemeal government attempts to do it, don't make any sense even on its own terms. So, like, yep. bottom line, do you, it sounds, my, what I'm getting away is that you don't really believe in climate change as it's accepted currently. Not just the political, like, repairs to it, you just, it seems like you just don't believe in its extreme capabilities or that it will really happen in any significant way. I mean, like, okay, it's, so, it's like, I don't, mm -hmm. like, really, I would, I would love a yes or no answer. Okay, I, from my research, I think it's pretty well established that certainly other things equal more CO2 means more greenhouse effects and warmer temperature than would otherwise be the case. Human activity clearly releases CO2, so I have no problem with that. I think there's less consensus on the range of how much of the observed warming is attributable to human activity, but I'm fine saying that, yeah, I think most scientists working that would say a large portion is related. The issue, though, where now it starts getting murkier, the, the chains and the reasoning of when people say, do you believe in climate change? So I believe those three things, or at least I have no objection to them. But then they say, okay, given that the climate's, or the global temperature is going up, the climate's changing because of man's activity or human's activity, is that a good thing or a bad thing? And here there's, there's, good, there's pros and cons. And so I also don't have a problem. People want to say at some point the bads outweigh the goods. 
which, you know, okay. And then the last thing, though, is, okay, now various possible steps we might have governments do, or, you know, large corporations, whatever, to try to address it, will that help or hurt? And so it's that last step where I think people just assume, oh, if you believe in climate change, then that means you shouldn't want governments to do a lot. And to me, that doesn't... Fun. So I guess maybe the analogy would be if, if I were, you know, I'm a libertarian, so I'm against the drug war, and if someone says, oh, so you don't think the opioid crisis is real? I would say, no, I do. And I just, you know, the way the government's fighting it right now, I, I happen not to agree with it, and I've got philosophical problems with you know, the scope of government. But, so it's a, so, but I don't want to be coy with you. It's true, I don't think... We need to act within 12 years or our grandkids are underwater. No, I don't, I don't think that. And neither does the UN. The, the UN's documents don't support some of this casual apocalyptic rhetoric. Um, so l let me give you, there are plenty of free market reforms that could help on this. So for example, I think you should privatize roads. That would reduce traffic congestion. There would be less emissions. That would you know, reduce emissions. And that's also something I happen to favor anyway. So there's lots of things like that. Um, but, but yeah, in terms of, if, if major grant organizations, you know, private foundations want to give awards to people to like get technology here or to make batteries more effective, I'm all for, you know, private efforts. So yeah, I am glad that scientists are working on this stuff just in case, just like I'm glad they're, you know, looking in case there's a meteor that's going to come and hit us, we should be looking at how would we deal with that. If we realize we had eight years, you know, let, let's make some progress. Okay, sorry, you had your hand up for a while. First of all, thank you so much for coming to give this talk. Um, the question that I had is, earlier you were talking about, well, what I gathered was that you seemed um, unsure about the government's role on making, sh like, being an effective solution, mm -hmm. being, like, having effective solutions to climate change, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I got from your Right, that's, right that's right. a fair statement, yeah. And so, if we're saying that, are you saying that the government, a more reformed um, government, should have a say in this, or try to improve on, or try to come up with solutions for this? Or are you saying that the government should just not be involved because it's ineffective? Because what are the chances that a non-government actor would be doing these things that you're proposing? Okay, so there are scientists working on these things. In fairness, I don't know, you know, some of them might be getting like an NSF grant or something, so I don't know how much the government is indirectly funding some or all of these projects. I, I think for sure at least one of the teams is a purely private, it's kind of like with the, um, you know, the, the, the SpaceX and there's very, you know, awards given to people for hitting milestones or certain things. I think at least some of those organizations are funding efforts to, you know, are, is there some out of the box way we can get CO2 out of the air, that kind of thing. Um, so, Sorry, I'm trying to remember. So l let me also just make sure you guys are seeing here, it's not enough if one or a handful of governments, you know, aggressively cut down on CO2 emissions. That even like if in Canada, if they slam the brakes, if, or especially the state level doesn't make it, if, if California really slams the brakes, puts in place, you know, a $3 a gallon tax on gasoline for, you know, climate change purposes, makes electricity, you know, bans, any electricity coming from coal or even natural gas, let's say, or oil, they could do that, but mostly what would happen is over time, business would relocate out of California into other jurisdictions, and people would stop moving there. So I don't, any regional thing that really clamps down, even in a draconian fashion on emissions, as long as the rest of the world doesn't do it in a like, similar fashion, you're really just displacing it, so global emissions don't drop by as much as like California emissions did. Right, so, yeah. so my question is, yeah. um, so not even that we need to have like have carbon taxes, right? All of the these other creative solutions that you're proposing, if a, if like governmental actors across the world are at the forefront or at the drivers for these changes, if it isn't America who's supposed to be the leader of the free mm -hmm. world driving these alternative changes to this problem, who would take on the role? Is what I'm asking you. Okay, so yeah, I would much prefer if. If the governments of the world, for example, you know, gave um, tax credits to companies if they did research and development spending on some of this stuff, so, so to me that would be completely opposed to governmental intervention. Well, the reason I'm I'm being slight of hand there is because they're they're refraining from taxing you if you do something they like. <laughs> so it's they're kind of steering it, but the actual it's a carrot, not a, you know they're not they're not spending extra money. They're just refraining from taking as much as they otherwise would have. So, if you could answer this, so should
should the government be steering or piloting this? Okay, I, I don't think so, just because, again, I, I don't think it's a proper role of government to be involved in something like that. Okay. But I, I realize people might disagree, and so that's why, again, I was trying to focus on yeah, this see, empirical stuff. But yeah, by my personal you, opinion, yeah, I don't Yeah, think. but going from there, who would, is my question. Okay, so, again, I, to me, what I think is going to happen is the temperatures are going to rise, they're eventually going to peak and come down, and people will debate about how much wool, you know, because a lot of stuff is variable. You know, there's, there's noise, those other things. And people continue to debate how much does human influence matter. These other technologies, will, you know, ge what's called geoengineering, like in the year 2200, I'm sure the governments will have ways that they kind of adjust various variables, you know, in the atmosphere, things like that, because they'll have a lot more control over it. So I think that stuff's going to happen regardless of what I say or what, you know, the various environmental groups or right-wing pro-business groups do. That stuff's going to happen, and... I don't, I don't think politically that it's going to solve the problem. So yes, there's there's going to be every time there's a fire, you know, the national people point to that and say well, that's, whether that's global warming or not, and Republicans will say no, it isn't, and, and so forth. That's going to happen, but I don't think it's going to be this existential threat, just like there were lots of things throughout history that were you know big scares yeah. for a while that in retrospect we realize yeah they kind of got out of hand with that. So I think it's going to be like that. That. There will be problems, and people, humans will deal with it. And we'll, we'll march on. I think the people in the year 2080 will be vastly wealthier than we are right now. Yeah. Last question. Okay, yeah, yeah last question, she's saying. Um, I'm, this isn't a rhetorical question. I'm curious. Um, you know, I, I don't know, obviously, the degree extent the economic side of it, but so I'm just following the, the narrative arc, though. And I, I have a two part question. Um, the first of which is so you referred to um, David Roberts. And the, the first question is on your slide there is just like very briefly, I'm wondering, I don't, I'm not familiar with his work, I'm wondering if you can mm -hmm. ex explain briefly his credentials and how does he fit into like this is an expert you're citing and then I follow up question after that. I'm wondering if first, you just have some land who he is. Okay, yeah, so David Roberts, he is the uh, climate change expert, I guess you call him for Vox. So I don't know in terms of his technical like, I don't know if he's got a, a PhD in something. My guess is he doesn't have a PhD. Um, I was grabbing him. So he's, I, I, I can't prove it to you. I just, no, I'm saying I've read a lot of his work. He cites the peer-reviewed literature. So I, I do think he is qualified to say whether the governments of the world are living up to that. But no, I, I don't think he's a practicing scientist, if that's what you're asking. No, so my follow-up question, uh, I was wondering if you saw him as a qualified source, because... The actual subtitle of that article you cited. So the article was nobody's taking this seriously. But the subtitle is not. It, it didn't actually follow your narrative of like this is what the expert is saying, or this is not going against it. The subtext is actually we need to cut off fossil fuels. So nobody's taking it seriously, and actually we need to do more. It wasn't, in fact, that nobody's taking it seriously because it's ridiculous. So I, I was wondering. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry if if I misled you you guys. I was citing him to say that the, the, this guy is total left wing. I was saying he's not a conservative by any sense. No, he's a very far left guy who's against capitalism, and so that's why I was showing you this isn't like just the Heritage Foundation. It's like this is left wingers are admitting that the governments of the world aren't. You know, we need we need to do way more than we're doing right now. Let's stop thinking. That's that's his narrative. He's saying we're fooling people by telling them this can be relatively painless, and as long as we subsidize wind turbines and maybe get one less latte per week, we'll solve climate. He's like, no, it's going to be painful. This is going to be like, you know, the Great Depression or World War II level of rationing to solve this. Well, so, 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 so that, that's what I thought yeah. you were saying, but okay. unless I'm under, misunderstanding something here. So the subtitle reads, if we mean what we say, no more fossil fuels anywhere. So it's, it seems like he's actually arguing the opposite of what the narrative that you're saying. So like he's, he's saying, as a leftist, we actually need to stop using fossil fuels because this two degree climate thing is serious and so he's actually arguing that we need to cut fossil fuels. Okay, okay. I didn't realize you, you want to stop, so let me just real quickly try to answer. Yeah. So, I'm glad you raised because yeah, I'm, I'm, it seems like maybe I, I was unclear. So, yes, if if David Roberts heard my talk here, he would pass out. You know, he would, he would want to like tell each of you to email him so he could, you know, erase the lies that this right wing idiot just <laughs> said to you. Um, so he totally disagrees with me, but what I'm saying is he's saying the governments of the world with what they promised to do for this Paris Agreement 
we're not coming anywhere close. Let's stop, you know, beating the bush here. We need to get off fossil fuels immediately. And so I'm, and Nordhaus would agree with that too. That's why Nordhaus's model was showing the optimal amount of warming was like 3.5 C, because Nordhaus knew as bad as you think climate change is, if everyone stopped using coal within three years or something, like electricity would be a lot more expensive. There'd be a lot more people dying because their air conditioner doesn't work because it's too expensive. You know, they're, if people can't drive to work because gasoline is seven dollars a gallon, effectively, that causes problems too. So I'm saying, if the governments of the world told their citizens what needed to happen in order to hit the two C target, they would there would be revolt. They wouldn't go along with it. What's happening is the governments are telling them, oh, with these modest things we're doing, that will take care of climate change. And so people like Trump saying this is a bad deal for the U.S. This is goofy. Someone like me is saying. That's not solving the problem on its own terms, so this is stupid. And he's saying, you're, that's a dangerous delusion. You're fooling people into thinking we solved the problem. No, we haven't. We're running out of time. But everybody on the left and right here is agreeing the Paris Agreement on its own terms does not solve the problem. And so that's what I was saying. It's, it's odd that when Trump dropped out of it from the rhetoric, you would think he just ruined something great when you know, the honest people on the left are admitting this isn't going to solve anything because we're not even close. Okay, all so right. All right, th thanks everybody.